When the day begins, there is always lots of work to do. Orders to fill, production quotas to meet, and those ever-present deadlines to hit. After all, time is money, and someone is always watching the bottom line. But if we rush and aren't careful, we could very well cause an accident, damage valuable property, even suffer a serious injury. Sure, we've got to get the job done, but the real bottom line is doing the job safely. That's where the phrase safety first comes in. It means that working safely is the top priority, our primary goal. So we must learn to take precautions, protect ourselves from hazards, prevent accidents, and prepare for emergencies. Before you begin a task, you have to be mentally prepared to work safely, no matter how simple or routine the job may seem. Concentration is the key. If you give the task your full attention, you are much less likely to make a mistake and cause an accident. There are a number of things that can affect our focus. Anger and frustration are two of the culprits. They can cloud your mind and impair your judgment. A decision made in the heat of the moment could have disastrous consequences. So if you ever feel frustrated or angry, take a break. Step back and take a deep breath, or switch to another task for a while. You can resume your original work when you're calm and in the right frame of mind. Drugs and alcohol can also alter your state of mind and ability to focus on what you're doing and have no place in the workplace. You have to be careful about what you do on your own time as well. The residual effects of a substance can cause someone to have an accident hours or even days after they last used it. If you drink, do it in moderation and don't drive. Make sure the effects of any alcohol you have had are long gone before you start to work. Know your company's drug and alcohol policy and follow it. Inform your supervisor immediately if you suspect a coworker is under the influence. And never operate equipment if you are taking medication that could negatively affect your performance. You need to keep your mind clear at all times. Concentrate and be aware of everything that goes on around you. Then you'll be mentally prepared to work safely. Preventing accidents is an important part of making safety a top priority. Most hazards can be spotted and eliminated before they become a problem. Inspect your work area. Look for hazards that could endanger you or your coworkers. Then take steps to remove them or reduce the risk that they will cause an accident. For example, walkways, hallways, and exits should be kept clear of obstacles at all times. A simple pile of boxes could cause someone to trip and fall or block an emergency escape route. Things like loose railings and overstocked shelves can also be accidents waiting to happen. Look for fire hazards as well. Sparks from equipment and machinery, overloaded outlets, and damaged electrical cords can all be a source of ignition. Correct situations like these as soon as possible. As you reach the end of your workday, you still have some safety work to do. Good housekeeping is also important for accident prevention. Tidy up your work area, properly dispose of scrap, and return leftover materials to their assigned storage places. Put all tools and equipment back where they belong. This eliminates clutter and makes things easier for everyone to find as well. Don't overload shelves or jam-pack storage areas. Find a comfortable place for everything and put everything in its place. But not all housekeeping situations have simple solutions. If you encounter a problem that you can't solve yourself, talk to your supervisor or safety manager. They are there to help. Thank you. 
Looking for potential problems and reducing risks can help us to prevent accidents. But sometimes the possibility of a problem occurring can't be avoided. So gloves, safety shoes, and other personal protective equipment, PPE, are often necessary to help guard against injury. Let's start at ground level and work our way up. Foot protection, usually safety shoes, is needed in many work environments. Most safety shoes have soles that are designed for safe traction on specific surfaces, such as oily or wet flooring. Many shoes have steel toes as well. You need to choose the best shoes for the jobs you do and wear them. Gloves can improve your grip and protect your hands from potential hazards such as splinters, sharp edges, and chemicals. They are made from many types of material, including cloth, leather, metal mesh, rubber, and plastic. Each protects you from different things, so make sure you know which type is right for the job that you are doing. Sometimes eye protection may seem bulky and unnecessary, but remember, eye injuries can be nasty, far more uncomfortable than the eyewear itself. Safety glasses and goggles protect against a variety of hazards. In certain situations, you may also need to add a face shield. Ask your supervisor about the type of protection you'll need for your job. Hearing protection can often eliminate the harmful effects of hazardous noise. Earplugs, canal caps, and earmuffs all provide different degrees of protection. If necessary, you can use both plugs and muffs in extremely noisy situations. When harmful dust, fumes, and vapors make the air dangerous to breathe, respiratory protection is what is needed. Respiratory hazards can do serious damage to your lungs. Fortunately, there are a number of types of protection that can help. Filter masks, chemical cartridge respirators, and supplied air respirators each protect you from different types and degrees of hazards. So you should first determine what kind of protection you need for your work environment. OSHA has established assigned protection factors for different types of respirators, which can help you find the appropriate respirator for your job. When you select a respirator, make sure that it's undamaged. If you are unfamiliar with the equipment, it's a good idea to practice using it before going into your work area. For most respirators, you will also need to undergo a fit test to make sure they are sealing tightly to your face. Protective clothing is something else you may need to use to stay safe. Aprons and lab-type coats can defend against flying particles and contact with hazardous materials. And a good, strong hard hat is essential around overhead hazards. Keep in mind, most tasks have multiple hazards, so combine the safety gear you use for complete protection. Talk to your supervisor or safety manager if you have any questions about the PPE that's right for you. The way you do your job is just as important as the personal protective equipment, PPE, that you wear. Careless actions can have devastating consequences. Tools are a great example. Where would you be without them? But use a tool incorrectly and someone could get hurt. So you need to adhere to some good tool rules. Always use the right tool for the job. Check that all the tools you use are clean and undamaged. And make sure you know how to properly use the tools that you work with. Power tools and other electrical equipment require special consideration. Inspect all power cords. A damaged wire is both a shock hazard and a fire risk. Too many plugs in one outlet can overload the circuit, blow out a fuse, or even start a fire. So don't create an octopus. Remember to unplug or lock out electrical equipment before attempting repairs. If you don't, you may get a shocking reminder. When you're working near machines with moving parts, make sure that you are wearing appropriate personal protective equipment.
remove loose clothing and jewelry that could get caught in the equipment as well. In a warehouse, be careful how you handle the materials that you're working with. Use a cart or dolly, or get help if you have to move a heavy or unwieldy object. Only use powered equipment such as a forklift if you are trained and certified on it. Consult the operating manual if you have any questions. Plan your route, take your time, and always be aware of what is going on around you. But safe work practices go beyond how we use tools and equipment. We need to be careful how we use our bodies as well. Each job creates a different set of physical demands. Knowing how your body works can help you avoid ergonomic injuries. First, keep your body in neutral positions as much as possible. When you are in a neutral position, your joints are aligned and place the least amount of stress on your body. Select tools that are ergonomically friendly and whose weight, size, and shape make them easy to use. Adjust your workstation to fit your size and shape, whether you're in an office or in a warehouse. And keep tools and materials within easy reach. No matter where you work, it's likely that you will end up lifting and carrying something. When you're lifting, be sure to use proper technique. Bend at the knees, keep your back straight, and lift with your legs smoothly, not suddenly. And if you are ever unsure about how to use a piece of equipment or perform a task, talk to your supervisor. No matter how careful we are, no matter what precautions we take, accidents still happen. So we need to be prepared to act if an emergency occurs. Be sure to read the safety data sheets for any hazardous materials in your work area before you use them. SDSs should be kept in a central location for quick reference. Clean up chemical spills immediately, but be careful. Make sure you know what chemicals you are dealing with and the tools and materials that should be used in the cleanup process. Water is almost always the first line of defense when someone is splashed by a hazardous chemical. This is where safety showers and eye washes come into play. Be sure you know where they are and how they work. Fires are another major threat in the workplace. Nowadays, they often involve toxic fumes and vapors, which makes them more dangerous than ever. Be familiar with your facility's emergency action plan. It will describe how to report fires and where to go if one occurs. Make sure that emergency telephone numbers are posted in plain sight at all the telephones in your facility. And know at least two evacuation routes that you can use if you ever need to leave your work area. You can sometimes fight small fires yourself and prevent them from spreading. So know where the fire extinguishers are in your facility and how to use them. Remember, there are different types of extinguishers for different types of fires. Be sure that you have the correct one for the fire that you're fighting. Basic first aid and CPR can be valuable skills in many emergency situations. But don't try to do anything unless you have the proper training. You could do more harm than good. And never underestimate the seriousness of an injury. Seek medical attention as soon as possible. Above all, stay calm. It can be vitally important in handling emergency situations. There can be a lot going on in our workplaces, and it's important to know what we can do to work safely. Let's review. Mental preparation is important. Concentrate, stay alert, and be aware of what's happening around you. Your first focus should be on accident prevention. Look out for hazards and remove them. Always use the correct PPE for the job that you are doing. Follow safe work practices. Use proper procedures and eliminate careless habits. And remember to prepare yourself for emergencies. 
If you and your coworkers work together as a team and play by the rules, safety will always be the top priority.